Um, okay, so uh, there we saw how uh, the fidelity of our RF measurements uh, helped out a validation lab and were integrated into the design process. But one of the goals of graphical system design is also to further integrate design and test. We actually have a group, a research group inside National Instruments that focuses on doing this with RF products, using the same components that you just saw to actually implement next generation communication system prototypes. So I'd like to bring up a couple of those researchers to uh, talk a little bit more about that. Please welcome Dr. Ian Wong and Yong Rao. What's up, guys? What's up, Ian? Hey, welcome, man. Okay, Ian, it's been a couple of years since you were up on the NI Week uh, stage. What brings you back? Other than to score a new NI Week shirt? <laughs> Other than that. Okay. Uh, seriously, uh, I wanted to give the NI Week audience a progress report on what our team has been working on the past two years. So in 2009, they came up here and talked about LTE, this cellular standard that promises hundreds of megabits of data rate. But then as you said in your intro, our kind of thirst for mobile devices capabilities have just grown the past several years. And my role at NI is to kind of track the evolution of the cellular standard. And I'm here to tell you about an even upcoming standard called LTE Advanced that promises up to 10 times the bit rates of LTE over one gigabits per second. Wow, I can imagine what we'll do with the gigabit data rate on our phone. Um, but you know, in seriousness, as I said earlier, a lot of the, develop a lot of the rest of the world gets this uh, internet through wireless connections. This is pretty important technology. What does it take to pull off these kind of data rates? Right, so in typical NI Week fashion, we answer those questions not with words, but with an awesome demo. So I'm proud to announce that this demo right here on stage is the world's first 8x8 MIMO LTE advanced demonstration on a commercial off-the-shelf platform achieving close to one gigabits per second. Yeah, all right, man, you're excited. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, we have a prototype of an LT advanced base station transmitter here on the left with eight transmit antennas communicating to our LT advanced cell phone prototype, also with eight receive antennas, all on the PXI platform. Cool. So that one's a cell phone, huh? Yeah, I know, Eric. But at least you won't get caught swimming with this phone. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> but seriously, we're talking about technology that won't see deployment five to 10 years from now but are allowing our customers to begin prototyping the algorithms that are necessary for these complex systems. Furthermore, imagine prototyping this using commercial off-the-shelf, uh, kind of like our competitor's box instruments. Mm -hmm. We will not have any room to walk on this stage. True enough. Yeah, so OK, how does it all work? So we basically have on our transmitter chassis an 8133 quad-core controller that's transmitting one gigabits per second of data down to our flex rios that do our transmitter processing. This is then transmitted over the air using eight of our RF up converters and sampled again on the other side, eight of our RF down converters and sampled using our newest front end adapter modules, the dual channel 250 megahertz digitizers that then go into more flex rios to do the receiver side processing. Cool. So to show you the front panel here on our transmitter side, we basically have our LT advanced MIMO transmitter with all the flex rios resources spelled out and the antennas that are assigned to them. In the middle, we have the LTE advanced settings, which were set to eight transmit antennas and two component carriers, each 20 megahertz. So this allows us to achieve close to one gigabits per second. And on the receiver side, it's basically our not so mobile PXI cell phone trying to search for its cell phone signal. But then when Yong clicks start on our transmitter, the signal now goes over the air, and hopefully we have locked our, to our cell phone signal, and we can show the constellations, all eight of them, and each dot right here represents six bits of information over the air, achieving close to one gigabits per second. Cool. And so Yong can now kind of block the signal a little bit to make sure that you know, this is not all smoke and mirrors. Very cool. That's awesome. So now, you, um, I've been working with you a little Yeah, he deserves applause for that. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. So um, maybe more amazing, you know, tell everyone kind of how long it took you guys to put this together. So overall, this project took about six man months of effort. Very intense effort, though. Yeah, it was. So, <laughs> but then, right. Go ahead. I mean, this is amazing. So tell them, tell them a little bit about what that took. Right. But then it's all using, of course, LabVIEW and LabVIEW FPGA. So if I were to design this, let's say, using traditional HDL or RTL, it will take hundreds of pages of code. And I'm not even qualified to do that. Mm -hmm. But because we're using LabVIEW and LabVIEW FPGA, it took tens of VIs to complete this system. 
But then because at NI, we do not stop innovating, we're proud to announce that early next year, we're going to release a totally new module called the LabVIEW DSP Design Module that allows algorithm engineers like myself prototype complex signal processing systems even faster, but without sacrificing efficiency nor computation. Wow, that's fantastic. And I can tell you're excited about it. So Ian, thank you very much. And Yang, that's really, really cool.